scrubbing my shoe last night, attempting to clean it because the Georgia clay gets on it. I don't know if you can see the brown, but yeah, just uh, it's a lot. So uh, I didn't expect to get them so dirty when I bought them. So I bought them to work out in. But they're so comfortable. I, I wore them doing yard work and building cabinets and all sorts of stuff. And yeah, so I dirty them up. So anyway, I'm sitting there cleaning them. Holding them like this, no, holding them like this with my left hand, and I'm scrubbing them with a little brush. Now all of a sudden, like my left thumb just locks itself against my palm, and my whole tendon or whatever, you know, just starts spasming, and I can't, I can't move my thumb, I can't. So I have to grab my thumb with my right hand and like yank it up and like you feel it like just snap or something you know like unpops or something and I was like that was crazy and it was severely it was lots of pain and then you know it was fine whatever like last night I'm pouring drinks and uh I'm gonna put the pitcher back in the fridge and I was like oh that really but I've been using it this is after I've been using it for hours after that happened I was like wow my hand feels weird barely gripped that thing um woke up this morning, like five in the morning, almost in tears, not knowing what the hell was going on. I realized I just tried to move my hand. I just tried to flex my, like my hand was like locked. I couldn't open it. And uh, it wasn't closed fist, but it was like, you know, claw. And I couldn't open it and it was excruciatingly painful. And I had no idea, but just, I, mean, I had no choice but to sit there and just like stretch it out under my body and sit. You know, lay on my hand with palm down, my butt cheek on it, in pain for like 20 minutes until it opened it up enough. And uh, yeah, so I started reading, and I guess it's just trigger thumb, you know, basically when that happens, and it can happen for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, so there's nothing really you can do about it unless you need surgery, except for rest and massage it and ice and wrap it. So it really hurts and I've been stretching it, but oh my goodness. So yeah, I can't use my hand at all. I had planned on, I've got most of the stuff to fix the dryer. I've got to get two more pieces. I was planning on doing that today. I was planning on getting the counter outside today and sanding the bottom of it. Cause it's been up here for like three weeks now. Well, you know, I had to cure for like two weeks. Yeah, I had to cure for two weeks straight. And then, uh, and it's been a couple weeks it's set because my wife's been busy and it was raining for like a solid week so we couldn't get it out. Well, it's, you know, it's perfect today, but no chance. Can't get it out there because um, my hand's messed up. And So, yeah, so this will be another week or so at least before I get the counter done and the dryer. So that's kind of disappointing, but I'm definitely on bed rest for the next few. So definitely on bed rest for the next little bit. So, but love our new dryer and our washer. They're freaking awesome. Okay, I don't know when I made that other video. I think that was this morning around 9 or so, maybe 10. I, uh, it's like 5 now. About an hour ago, I decided, you know, I was going to play, try to play a video game. And, uh, I was trying to do a move that I had at my, you know, I would normally do it with my left hand, but I don't have the mobility, so I was using my right hand and I almost dropped my controller. And muscle memory went where I just, reflex to grab my controller and I moved my thumb quickly in a way I wasn't expecting and I immediately felt it pop so I think I actually dislocated it and pulled it too hard when I pulled it up last night and uh, either that or I somehow did it in my sleep but yeah so now I mean it still hurts but it's a uh, yeah near the level of pain I had before it's in different areas but yeah that's uh, that's no good but now I have mobility it just it hurts to move but now I can do it so that was weird. Don't get old, folks. Are you cleaning it now or attacking it? Will you quit it? <laughs> That's it? You done? You killed it? My Country Bath. 
My country bath gets taken in a garden bathtub. It's replaced with fiberglass by me. When I, mean, I didn't know how to do it. I still don't know how to do it. But I know how to do it. <laughs> I know how to do a lot of other things. But at the time, I was here for about, oh, I don't know, about two and a half months before we sprung a leak and I had to get to the pipes and replace them. Well, the only way to do that is through the bathtub. What a good design, right? In my country bath, I put in a little bit of oil of Olay and some Dr. Teal's lavender and uh, a little bit of defense that I buy in a gallon jug. My country bath, the water cuts off because we have water problems. I still have to get that looked into. Oh, there it goes. Thanks for coming back on, water. Do observe our bounty of sanitizers and sanitizing, uh, well, yeah, a very variety of sanitizers and soaps, uh, sanitizer spray and wipes, of course, because, you know, pandemic type of how you doing. Even wound care. Oh my goodness, wound care right next to the Drano. Is that good? Are we, are we making Oh, I'm figuring out bombs. Other part of my country bath because we have a 40 gallon water heater which is not enough for that giant bathtub so I boil water and throw a bunch of hot I might throw a bunch of boilers in there get myself a hot toddy I do I don't know if I've ever been so pissed off in my life so here's my pedestal there's my washer it's all hooked up and running as you can see there's my dryer vent the old lady's like oh you know you gotta get a cord for the dryer probably because it doesn't come with one like the stove I'm like, okay, so what do I need? She's like, you gotta get a three prong, because they come in three prong or four prong, and we have a three prong. And I'm like, okay. And then, like, I rush to town to grab a three prong so that I can get this hooked up and start doing laundry. So the whole weekend when she's sleeping, I've literally got no clean clothes in the house. And I was planning on doing laundry all weekend. So we had it up here. And I got it all wired up, I'm about to plug it in. Oh, it's a fucking four prongs. So I got the wire out. I now I just ordered one because I'm not gonna be able to go to town and get it. Fucked up my thing, trying to get it down. Oh, I'm so fucking pissed. I'm so fucking pissed! Seems legit. No rain. Hadn't been any rain. In at least a day or so. But there has been a lot of rain this week. Do you think their whole roof is just plumb up full of water and it's just slowly draining out through that PVC pipe? That's not at all sus. subject now you can see the steam popping off that oh yeah I think I gotta wait a little while she's too hot to eat she's got the andouille sausage though and the boneless skinless chicken breast chunks and uh, I got to tell my wife to get uh, no tails I told her peeled and vain, but I didn't tell her no tails so the shrimp has tails so you gotta pull those tails off unless you like a crunchy crunchy tail but me okay this is the nectar of the gods. Don't mind the uh, don't mind the gumbo spoon. I'm eating up some more gumbo because, of course, I am. But oh my goodness! Look at my side table deliciousness that I just when I when I'm when I when I'm feeling a hankering for a for a howdy do. I dip into the old great value you know, gallon size Ziploc bag. And I get myself some of the, some of the good stuff. We got almonds and pecans and raisins and figs and dates and apricots and golden raisins and pepitos or pepita. Oh wait, no, those aren't. Oh, there you go. Little green seeds, the pepitas. I'm not sure what these, what these little, uh, like those three. Ra oh, come on, focus, fuck. What those three little bean looking things are, those are in the protein mix. Oh, and these, those, those, that little cashew looking thing that's not a cashew, but, oh, those are like little, uh, 
garbanzo beans or something. That's not what they are, but oh my goodness, they're delicious. Some apricots and oh, so oh, some dried freeze dried apples that dip, when once re, they kind of reconstitute a little bit once they're in with all the, the the stuff, they become sticky and moist and delicious again. They're not so yeah. That's my that's my little bro. Go away, fly! Oh, sorry, apologize. That might have been a little bit aggressive on the visual. Oh my goodness. I've done this before so what we got here is we got two boneless skinless chicken breasts that I boiled in water until they were done and then I shredded with my hands and then I put an entire tub of sour cream in uh, you know like the regular not the gigantic one but the mid not the tiny one but you know the how you doing was that 28 ounce I don't know and I put a can of sliced or chopped olives in there sliced is fine too but I accidentally bought can of chops so those were in there I got about a half a bag or three-quarter bag or two quarter two-third bag of rather Colby Jack cheese uh, cream of chicken uh, can of green chilies can of green chilies and uh, then mix it all up and then I'm gonna I got my pan sprayed here with some with some vegetable spray and I'm gonna fill these tortillas with this stuff and then I'm gonna sprinkle cheese and uh, olives over some green and red sauce. I'll put green on half and red on the other, green on half, red on the other, and then sprinkle it with cheese and olives. And then you put it in the oven for, you know, like 350 degrees or something for 25, 35 minutes until their edges are kind of crispy, to the edges at the ends, the ends rather are kind of crispy and the cheese is all melty. And then you take it out and you eat it up, yum. Have I done this before? Okay, there we go. pre sauce cheese and olives. And I've put the remainder in a food saver bag so I'll seal that shit up, vacuum it out, seal it up, throw it in the freezer. Oh, I've been recording and not recording. Okay, so there it is. All done. Half red, half green. Some of the red is bleeding over into the green, as you can see, as we'll do on the bottom layer. No big deal. The rest of the cheese. Olives on top after drained. I'm going to cover it with foil, throw it in there at 350 for about 35-40 minutes. And uh, then probably pull the foil off and give it another 5 or 10. Just to kind of crisp up a little bit extra because I like them all crispy on the outside. They're all, they're all crispy. And then it'll be delicious. Rain them up. Chicken enchiladas. I'm bored as all get out and I still haven't uh, tightened the chain of my motorcycle. And even if I had, it's really too hot to go for a ride because it's too hot to go for a ride. But it is the first day that the heat in the season is not in the triple digits. And I got this thing two years ago maybe. And it's been sitting ever since. So I think I'm gonna break it open and see if she's even salvageable. And if she is, I think I might throw her up. I think I'm gonna throw this board up real quick so I can hang these cabinets that I paid too much money for. I can do my. Oh, I thought I was recording, but apparently not. Okay, so I know you can't hardly tell, but I done pulled most of the stuff out of here and got it slightly rearranged. Oh, I have paint on my finger and I'm getting on my phone. Son of a dick. Okay, so yeah, I got, you know, stains and paints kind of in that corner. Uh, you know, not just, got poisons, got my acetones, nature alcohol, some tools. All my engine stuff for from cars to chainsaws to dirt bikes to everything in between uh, woodworking stuff drill bits and socket sets and hole saw sets and stuff that I don't use as often right around here got all my fasteners most of my fasteners I think I've gathered them out of the shed here got them here on the shelf I'm gonna put those in my cabinet um, and then I'm probably gonna just put a bunch of random 
BS in my cabinet that I don't really, you know, have room for in here or that would be better served out here. Stuff that I don't care about is lightning enough that anybody can't get under my property and bust up in a lock if they really wanted to. But stuff that I just care less about, like fasteners and stuff out here, I got a bunch of gloves on that shelf. I think I'm going to keep my caulking out here just because it fits great. I mean, I'm going to have to put, what I'll have to do is I'll have to put labels on the outside of these cabinets and then I'll have a basic idea of what uh what's in here uh, yeah so i'm gonna take a break though because it's getting hot well i broke her open those are the covers considering they've been encased in cardboard and exposed to the weather for the better part of two years and directly exposed to the rain like sitting out here for the better part of i don't know six nine months since whenever i put the scaffolding under here which is probably yeah, at least about six months ago. Uh, yeah, it's been sitting out there. I think I'm going to measure out, read this book here. Let me measure out, see about throwing it up. Uh, got a little bit more action going. Got my gloves and my sandpapers. Some specialty stuffs, some more specialty stuffs. Motorcycle stuff, zip ties, staple, staple gun. All my fasteners including all my empties up top for boxes I need to use for whatever or to remind me that hey I need to get some more of those fasteners uh, done one more wasp nest I uh, showed y'all all this already well I've been through materials list and it appears we have everything I think we're missing a rope which I can get a rope but I think all the essential parts we have I got everything not laid out per se but laid out so I can count it should be three pieces of fabric apparently the roof the back and the door there's two packages i'm hoping there's three fabrics in there um okay i'm gonna drink some water take a break let me set y'all up for a time lapse Okay, well the plan's in no way, shape, or form, say to uh, put sheet metal screws in there, but I'm doing so, drilling out the holes and popping them in there. Ideally, they would be placed in the bottom to make sure, or even on the sides, at least on this area, to make sure uh, you know, it doesn't mess up the canopy. But I can, uh, if I'm that worried about it, I can drop a little bit of silicone over each one, which I may or may not do. My main concern is I just want it to uh, be more rigid. Hell, I saw a girl online that wanted to make it virtually permanent, some little teenage girl who wanted to rebuild her slug bug with her dad, and she straight framed that fucker with wood. <laughs> she put all sides, all sides, all sides, all sides, all She put all sorts of wood framings. She went into the physics of it and explained like, why well, you need this type of thing to, for lateral force and this type of structure for, you know, shear force and... The problem with the tents that Harbor Freight offers is that they're not strong enough to last the winters that Teddy Land has here. This drinking straw is a lot like the steel tubes used in the frame of this tent. It has a lot of compressive strength, which means you can push on it really hard and it'd be perfectly fine. It also has a lot of tensile strength, which means you can pull on it. Walls made out of tubing like this will skew or twist in high winds or other types of pressure. This is a wall with cross braces and this is a wall without. If I try and push this relay this way, it can't because it introduces a skew. However, with this one, it can. Now if I try and push it this way, it can't either because it introduces a twist. Now this wall, however, once again, can. See if I can't find that video and link it. It was interesting. That's what I originally had planned to do with this, but given the price of wood now, and given that I don't necessarily need it since I got this extension to last more than a couple years, I mean, as long as it lasts, great. I still got to go to Home Depot and get dryer parts. Did I turn British for a minute? Home Depot. I probably need more so some more of those self tappers. I'm not gonna have enough to finish, I'm sure. Okay, had a little break. 
Uh, about to get back to it. I really need to find my rubber mallet and I cannot. And that bites because these are all compression fittings and some of, some of the poles and connections are a little bit wonky. So I don't know, see if we can't work it out. I haven't checked the footage, so I'm not sure when I stopped filming. But uh, basically, I, I secured all these bar, these lower bar braces temporarily, so that I could walk the thing over here because it's too hilly over there. I mean, it's not level over here either, but it's a lot more level than it is there, and it needs to be more or less on level ground. So uh, I have to adjust a little bit. But anyway, I'm trying to. I'd measure it out. I'll have to measure it out again. But I'm trying to get these stupid augers in. And they are just garbaggio. I mean, I'm in Georgia clay, right? So I'm not, I'm not having a lot of luck. But this is not, this design is not working. So I'm about to see if I got a, I, there's no way I have a, a socket that'll go over that end, but I'm about to see if I do.